Hey, Brian. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Busy, busy time, but good. Thanks for asking. All right. Security to make sure everybody can share screens. Okay. Looking good. How are you doing, Jesse? Uh, busy. Yeah. <laughs> but everything's going well. The public servant does not sleep. No. <laughs> Danielle knows. <laughs> not even I guess I am a servant, but I don't think I'm even officially a public servant. <laughs> you are. You're you're speaking for the people. Oh my God. <laughs> speaking up at least. <laughs> How's everyone doing? How are you, Kathy? Kathy. How are you you're on mute, Kathy. Yeah, sorry, I didn't realize. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. All right. Lots of stuff happening. This Northampton neighbors is like takes up so much of my time. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, but I'm I'm volunteering, giving vaccinations, which is great. How's the shooting people doing? Oh, it's great. I was the guy. It's the happiest place to be. People Good. are so grateful it's wonderful it really is and you know i mean i i do a lot of educating too it's not just giving i mean i give them information where to get reliable valid information great but it's good thank you hi everyone hi mike hi mike i know that how I you guys doing having... well, good. Good. rachel good How's everyone? How's life? It's How are you? Beautiful. It's I'm sunny. Good. I'm good. Lights out. It, That's great. I know the sun's still out. It's seven yeah, o'clock. It's Imagine wonderful. That. It's so wonderful. It is the longest spring I can remember since childhood. Mm. It's really been incredible and it's not hot yet. No. It's amazing. Right. Yeah. Oh, Eamon's here, good. Yeah, I've been loving the weather. Yeah, it's beautiful. And the colors, it's so magical. Oh. Yeah, Mount Tom looks so soft right now. Sorry, I'm doing some calculations. Okay. <laughs> so a very short haircut, Brian. I yeah, do. You are. Part of my uh, cost saving measures where I like let it grow for one month and then I cut it all off. <laughs> kind of like the, the neighbor that lets the lawn go far too far. <laughs> cut it really short. Of course, now when you say that, I'll be Take thinking about right? lawnmower. <laughs> I know someone who grows his hair, a guy who grows his hair very long for about two years and then donates it and goes to a big head and wow. then starts over and keeps doing it. <laughs> Lovely. Noble. Oh, it's, a, it's a cycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah one, one or the other. I'm just calculating what we uh, mm -hmm. made with Trans Performance first night nice. okay. and uh, for Sundays to see how much that is in, in versus like how much we have to pay Peter and Steve a year. Oh boy. So that will okay. help inform our decision funding of mm -hmm. the two things in the second part of the meeting. Yeah. And I just thought about this today. Thank you. And then Steve and Peter is Hi Danielle. Hi, Lori. How are, are you? you? Feeling okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm okay today. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. You look happy to be enjoying. That's very spring. close. What'd you say, Danielle? You look happy and enjoying spring. I am. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. It's <laughs> great. No complaints. Um, so, Brian, I know um, Dana and Kent aren't going to be here today. Do you, have you heard from Freeman? Free, yep. Freeman is traveling and yeah. Where is everybody? 
right. Great to not be here in time. Okay. And then didn't, um, um, well, although she's not officially our member, but Ellen is also traveling. Right? Ellen's traveling, and I don't know where Tulani is. I think she's coming, but I'm not sure. Okay. So I'm going to report on the school committee. Okay. Okay. So and Ashlyn, um, where is she? Haven't heard anything yeah. from Ashlyn, so hopefully yeah. she'll join. Okay, yeah. She missed last month, so. Um, but I will, I'll wait just okay. in case, because if we're going to try to move them past the minutes, then we need, yeah. I don't know that we have enough. Yeah, that's true. Do we? Not, we might have enough, person. but we can wait to do the minutes. Okay. Um, but I'll just, I'll read um, our statement. Um, right. yep. First, Mayor Narkowitz yep. made 16th state of emergency and Governor Baker's March 12th emergency order modifying the state's open meeting law. This meeting will be mm -hmm. conducted using remote participation via Zoom. Public can access the meeting by joining the Zoom or calling in with the instructions that were listed. Okay. So the meeting Great. is called to order. Great, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Um, so we'll hold on approving the minutes until, oh no, yay, we might be able to do that. So we need six, so that's. Okay, thank Hi, Jelani. Hi, Jelani. So we have uh, seven members of the okay. municipal board on this meeting. Because Rachel, you're still on a municipal board. Okay, great. So have folks had a chance to look at the minutes that were sent around from last week's mm -hmm. meeting, last month's meeting? In all honestly, no, honesty. Okay. Yes, um, yes, I have. So uh, I guess, was it, do, do you wanna take two minutes to take a look or can I, I should I move to pass? <laughs> It bathroom. wasn't very forgettable that meeting. True, true, true. I had a I had a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, and I guess it's it's more a general question that relates to the minutes than it is about the minutes themselves. Um, for public votes, um, should the names who voted for what be listed or doesn't matter and we just have a total tally because in the minutes it's a it's a total tally and it and it doesn't um say who voted for what and i'm just not sure um for for public votes if which which way is which way is normal You know, it's interesting because I don't know that either. I mean, my my advice, and you know, again, I'm I'm not on ink anymore. Is maybe check in with the um, mayor's office and find out what's required by municipal meetings. And to be honest with you, I'm I'm thinking in terms of being on the council on aging, and other ones, and and how we've done it. And unfortunately, there hasn't been very many votes on that council. So. I think it might be a it might be a good question. That's a good question, maybe for somebody from the municipal, you know, the official offices. Uh, there is there is a video uh, uh, of the 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 meeting on our website that people can access. Yeah. I don't know for for certain. Um, we're not a we're not a, a actual board. We're just a council, and we're like a a group that meets. So I don't know uh, if we need to put that in the minutes, but we yeah. might, might, but I'll ask, uh, I'll ask the chief of staff um, mm -hmm. if he can ask, you know, figure out who, maybe Laura from the city council, who's the administrator yeah. for the city council yeah. um, might know specifically. Yeah, because um, we are municipal and that's the Okay. Thing. I think we need so to- I'm gonna send Laura uh, and CC Allen right now an email about what we need to include in minutes, okay? So can we table the, should we table the approval of this month's minutes until next meeting? Sure. Yeah, you can, yeah. Uh, okay. We can also uh, amend the votes if you want. Uh, how does do Jesse or Danielle, or do you, do you know how the city council minutes look? Mm. 
I haven't actually looked at the minutes from the city council that closely. Um, okay. So no, I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Oh, I can, I know, the, I can ask, I have a friend who was a city councilor. I can ask her, Linda Desmond. Cool. Well, actually, I'm also gonna send an email to the uh, city clerk. Yeah, that'd be good. And, uh, She's a big fan of the Arts Council, so. Um, oh, she's great. Pam? Yeah, yeah. Good. I'll send an email to the three of them and let okay. them chime in. Yeah, um, we can good. either, so right now we can either, uh, we can either just wait till next month or we can amend the minutes and add the voting people um, as Jesse suggests. Uh, or we can, you know, somebody can move to approve the minutes. So some one of the board members has to move oh, to do something. Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah. I just had another question. Unless we just say is make um, are, are the uh, recorded minutes where are they kept and how are they shared with the public? What how is it online? They're, they're right online. Okay. Anybody can Maybe anybody can, can access ask, yeah. access them. Maybe we can make I referrals. Move in the public and make a suggestion to add to amend the meetings to say for specifics to go to the uh, recorded minutes where they are and stuff. And I move to approve the meeting notes from last week mm -hmm. uh, or from last month. Um, I feel as though we have a report of exactly what's there, list of who voted how as of to what we recorded last month. Okay, so just just the last, can you just say the last sentence, Mike? Just the last thing? Um, I said that we, you, you it. you it's very it. clear how we voted last okay. month because right. we have it recorded. Mm -hmm. So we don't really need to add it to public record unless the city is asking us to. I think it's very clear how we all voted. Okay. Okay, I'll second. And if we get feedback that we need to change it, I'll okay. move to amend next month. Okay, that's fine. Again, pending clarification. Are we? Okay, all oh, in favor? Right. <laughs> Aye. Sure. Aye. Okay, great. Great. That's unanimous because I'm typing so I can't see the hands or anything. Okay. Amen, are you voting to pass the minutes? Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay great. So yeah, I think we're you. <laughs> okay, we're okay, I just can't. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, everybody. Um, so um, we talked about just adding our group meeting norms as a reminder at the beginning of our session. So I'm just gonna drop the link in the chat. Um, and I'll paste them in as well, just in case, but we can move on to business, to our agenda, unless anybody wants to change our meeting norms. All right, I sent that email to Laura, Alan, and uh, Pam. Okay. So, and I was specific about, you know, is there something that dictates uh, what we have to include in our council minutes? And specifically with regards to how we vote on agenda items and if we have to include the name and which way they voted. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That's, thanks, cool. Thanks, Jesse, for bringing that up. As soon as I get, uh, oh, go ahead. Just saying thank you. No, you're welcome. Um, and it's, sorry. when I get a response, I will share it with uh, the board. Okay. I'll send it to the entire board with mm -hmm. whatever, if there's some kind of document attached that we have to include in business. And maybe that will actually help us in the future to have our minutes to be a little bit tighter. Yeah. Um, thanks. So artist reception updates, Lori, did you have any updates on the artist reception? There's nothing to update right now because we don't even know if we're having an opening. 
Um, my guess is, and it is a guess, Ellen and I haven't even talked about it because everything is so pandemic dependent that we're not in a position to speak about it, but it sounds, seems to me that it'll be put together at fairly close to the last minute once we know if it's possible or not. Um, but we had it under very good control last time, as Kathy can tell you, and I'm sure we will this time too. Great. That's all um, I can say. Thanks, Lori. So I, I yeah. think you're referring to the, the biennial reception, right? Yes. Okay, so I, you know, this will help everybody, and I'll start off with this. I had a meeting with the Board of Health last Monday and my staff with regards to um, out, basically events with public. I'm gonna pull into the chat right now a document that was shared with me. It's a PDF with hyperlinks on it that will basically be able to, um, you can click on whatever on the PDF with what kind of event you have. And right now, those are the guidelines that have been instituted since May 1st for outdoor events and indoor events. And if the COVID trend continues, sorry, I'm taking up so much airtime, by the way. The COVID trend continues, um, by August 1st of this summer, there'll be no restrictions. It will be quote unquote back to normal. Um, so right now we are moving forward with producing um, outdoor events that includes trans performance and summer park series. Wow. So that's an update that I think will help uh, guide the meeting and I'll stop talking now. Do you have so any that, questions? That means that when Ellen gets back and when Freeman gets back, we will have to have a discussion and we'll do so. So with it, so is Freeman on the artist reception committee and the biennial I committee? I didn't know that he was on the artist reception committee, but on this, it says it right here on, on the document that you have up. Yeah, the, the, I think you're, you might be conflating things, but artist reception is the one that we have specifically just for artists. Oh, that that um were like that we do not specifically the biennial. There is a reception for the biennial, um, which happens every two years, and that right. would happen at you know Forbes Library. But the, right. the artist reception is something that we can think about planning, um, and you know maybe the the group can get together. You and Freeman can chat about um, looking at our timeline of what we're doing. Uh, a good time to get together. Maybe we do the bi the artist reception. Every year we don't do the biennial, you know, maybe we don't, you know, cause we're already having that reception. We can invite everybody to there and the board is act, you know, oh, accessible. And then we'll do it. Maybe we do it the same time as we usually do the biennial, like maybe in 2022 in October, when we have the biennial, we'll have like an artist reception around the same time. Um, just some thoughts, but yeah, maybe uh, we can get together and talk about that. Or if anybody else has any more input about having a, uh, artist reception or has any questions about what the artist reception, you know, serves as. Danielle's right, got Brian. the Sorry, Kathy. You're okay. right, Brian, I was confusing two things. I was just gonna say, Danielle just wrote the artist reception. It has to do with, and you're right, that's as I remember it too. It has to do with um, people who have received grants and it's a celebration of those people. And it happens, you know, in conjunction with grants. And if there are any folks who were interested in joining that committee, usually some of the work involved is like securing a venue, getting food donations or drink donations, setting up, um, doing outreach and invitations to artists to make sure that they're going to actually show up. Mm -hmm. And then I imagine there would be some programming the night of the event, like if there are going to be remarks from any board members or if any artists wanted to speak or to just to figure out the the layout of that reception so for anyone new yeah it it's fun so it, it like really puts you in the thick of all of our artists so if you're interested you should definitely email brian to mm -hmm. to sign up um okay so biennial does anyone have updates to share for our biennial mm. Mm. I think it's the same answer. Do you, yeah. Kathy? Yeah, no, I, um, wait a minute. Sorry. 
Let's see if I'm, oh, I'm not muted yet. Um, no, we're still progress moving along, you know, in terms of the call out and et cetera. So I, I don't remember off the top of my head, the dates when, when things are due and stuff, but it's coming along all the, you know, we chose a poster, we chose, you know, the, the publicity, um, um, I guess, call outs, et cetera. Here, I'll, I'll share some of my screen about what we've been working on. Um, we had a target date of May 15th to start the call. Uh, I'm going to probably push it a little bit more than that because I'm focusing on the public art festival right now. Mm -hmm. But we have uh, a bunch of stuff to share with the biennial. Where is the biennial on here? Mm -hmm. Here we go. I'll show you some of the poster images mm -hmm. that we chose. Um, which one do we go with the Ooh, two. Two. B, B, B. so this is going to look like this mm -hmm. um i'll zoom out a little bit you guys can see it on the screen mm -hmm. so that's the call that's what's going to look like the call for entry is also done uh so this is what it looks like and then i just gotta i'm you know i've played with um artcall.org a bunch of times i just want to make sure uh, it's going to have all the functions we need. Um, the jurors are selected. If you want me to, I'm going to, you know, download a right. copy of this right now and I'll, I'll put it into the chat so everybody can right. take a look at it. Thank you, Brian. Yep. And then uh, I'll do that right now. Um, on another note, we got an email from um, Maurice. I don't know if you guys saw that. Did I share it with that? I forwarded. Yep. He was very happy to get that grant from us. Um, and then we're going to be, uh, Doing that. So I just sent, shared the biennial committee call. There's a press release ready. I love working with Karen Schofield. She is like a taskmaster, excellent writer. Um, I love her as our poet laureate. So, and I hope we can, I wish we, she can be on our board after. Maybe we can ask her to be on the ink board or something. Because be um, she's great to work with. Her and I get stuff done really well together and I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so we got a press release. We got the call kind of uh, tightened up. Um, I have most of the stuff in our call, and then we have a, 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 a graphic. And I think looking at my schedule, I'm gonna, cause I wanna really, I don't wanna just put it up willy nilly. I really wanna, I think like May 17th or May 18th, which is three days after, I think early next week, I can like just make sure everything's super tight and the software is functioning well. And if anybody wants to help me test it, it would be good um, and get all the you know web elements up there ready to go and get the press release out. I think that I, that's a good target date. Um, so that's my update. Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much. Great. Brian, I can't get into the chat right now. Is that because you have something else up? Lori, if you if you look at the very bottom of your screen, do oh, you see? Of course, thank you. Yep. Sorry. No, it's fine. It often disappears. Okay, thank you. Got it. Mm. Awesome. Anything else on the biennial? Nope. Great. So, cinema, Brian. <laughs> I haven't met with anybody. Uh, I have some updates. Uh, I met with Cinema Northampton like a month ago. Uh, and uh, I'm getting the idea that they don't want to travel around town. Um, and the idea is to, because Northampton Open Media is, is the usually like the physical production of the cinema, which is like they set up, they bring all the, the capital, which is like the big screen and the projector and the sound system um, that this year, you know, the idea was maybe like create, take cinema Northampton from this like kind of symbolic idea of like around town and have it, a, has it, have it physically locked this year um, at 33 Holly and set up like something where like there's a, there's a permanent screen and then they have to just bring things up. Um, I haven't heard anything. We haven't had a chance to meet. We were supposed to meet last week and then uh, uh, Al Williams from Northampton Open Media couldn't make it because he wasn't feeling well. So that's all I have right now mm -hmm. from the cinema mm -hmm. update. 
Would uh, it would it be outdoors at Holly Street? Yes. Awesome. So it'll be we're looking to like get permission from the uh, 33 Holly the the to to like have a screen that's outside of the, on on the building somewhere, and then mm -hmm. uh, figure out the best place for that. And, uh, and then maybe have a monthly movie, but I haven't heard anything. Mm -hmm. I'll reach out again um, soon about that. Awesome. Thank you. Equity committee. Um, I'm happy to provide an update unless anyone else wants to provide an update from our last session. Go for it. Okay, <laughs> cool. So um, the equity subcommittee has been meeting um, the Tuesday after our regular board meetings every month. So in our last meeting, um, we met with two um, DEAI consultants, Jan Martin and Gabe Hall, um, and they are working on a plan for um, different trainings that we can do as a, as a board that would one, sort of get us all on the same page about, you know, what equity looks like as part of our work and create a, a similar kind of baseline through which we can approach the work. Um, but two, also do some restorative work because I think like in the process of learning and all kind of moving through what we've been moving through the past year, like some unintentional harm has been done. And I think we need to do some repair before we can actually move forward and the consultants agreed with that. So there's gonna be some repair, which might come in the form of team building and, um, and stuff like that. So um, I hope to have an update soon. I, I know that the folks that we're working with are a little, are in higher ed. So this is the end of the semester crunch for them. Um, but I, I think that the general plan is that we'll do three trainings as a board that folks, um, I don't know that it would be required, but I think it would be like strongly, strongly, strongly encouraged. Um, and the goal is also not to necessarily take over our board meeting time because we do have so much stuff on the agenda. So we're gonna have to schedule them outside of board meeting times. So if folks like know that, for, for example, if you know that every you know Wednesday evening, you're absolutely always free and that would be an ideal time to schedule something, you can always send that along. As we, once we figure out the plan for when the trainings will be, I will of course like reach out with when to meet or doodle to figure out people's availability, but this is coming on the horizon. So just something to um, think about, get ready for. Um, and if you have like further questions or wanted to chat about it anytime, feel free to like shoot any of us an email. It's still in progress, but the, the ball is moving on it. Mm -hmm. um, Something that hasn't come up in an equity subcommittee yet, but I'll share is that um, I have been going to the IFT conference for the past month and a lot of their, um, because of my role on the board. And I don't know if Brian, if you've had a chance to go to any of those sessions okay. yet. Can I just ask when you said a couple of initials, IST, what that stands for, and also the DE, the other one, what's that? So I may have known it. D-E-A-I is like the latest term for um, diversity, mm -hmm. equity, inclusion, mm -hmm. and access. Okay, thank and you. And the access part uh, comes from like accessibility. So it's trying to be a little bit more intersectional in the approach to inclusion work. Mm -hmm. And then the conference, I will tell you, I believe it's called IFT. Um, and it stands for, um, gosh, I don't know what it stands for. That's terrible. I've been going all of their yeah, all right. things. Um, IFT trustees, Institute for Trustees, Institute for Trustees. Hmm. Um, so there was the ECCF Virtual Institute for Trustees in partnership with the Berkshire Taconic Community oh. Foundation um, conference and it's been for like uh, boards and nonprofits across the state basically. Um, and I've been going to a lot of trainings for board members. I can I can forward it to you, Brian. A lot of these 
um, sessions are recorded as well. So if anyone decides to, you know, look it up or whatever, I can forward some resources and forward recordings to sessions. But a couple of the sessions that I've been going to are about how to diversify boards and how to make your board an inclusive space and how to bring DEI initiatives to the work that you're doing. And um, I just wanted to share that it seems like a priority for every board that I've encountered through all of these sessions, whether they're in the arts or education. Yeah. So it's something that I found really comforting. People are kind of stumbling around in the same way that, you know, we're kind of trying to find our way. It's a, it's a common problem that people are working through. And um, I heard some pretty good suggestions, which I'm excited to share with the equity subcommittee when we meet next week. But I'll, I'll plug that one of the things I was most excited about was that the board chair for um, the House of the Seven Gables or the head of the trustees there said that she made it a priority at every trustees meeting and every board meeting that she attended mm -hmm. to bring one new DEAI concept in a small digestible wow. bite-sized you know, nugget to that meeting and make it a part of the content. So I thought that sounded kind of like do doable and manageable and exciting. So I'm gonna share that with our equity committee next week and see if you know anyone is interested in like doing almost like a show and tell of like oh here's this thing that I learned that's related to uh you know DEA I work and bring it up during this line on of our um full meeting so that it won't take up a whole session but we can weave it in every month and then we'll also have these more um in-depth training sessions with with facilitators um whose experiences map up to, to the audience that we want to serve. So that's all I have for equity. But if anyone has questions, happy to answer now or chat another time. And Jesse and Rachel, if you have anything to add from the last session, please feel free if I missed anything. And Brian, you too, you've been there too. Okay. I well, just said I'm excited about um, the direction this is taking and um, and also just wanted to mention that there was a bit of press uh, in the Gazette from the last meeting and I, um, so if, if anyone had missed like the op-eds that went around enough, Freeman had a, a good response and um, just making sure everyone had seen that. I didn't see Freeman's response yet. Yeah, I, I missed the op-eds. I saw the I saw the initial article. Um, the uh, uh, it was great to meet with um, Jen and now I'm totally blanking on the other person's name. Um, and I think that it's it's going to be a great uh, a great time that we'll be able to work work with them. Um, so that's all I'm going to add. That was just they're really great people. Thanks, Jesse and Rachel. I just dropped Freeman's article in the chat. I haven't read it yet, and I'm gonna not read it now. But I'm it's so tempting. <laughs> um, okay. I was I was confused by his response a little bit. It just felt like it was like an insider thing and not more to the general public, but. Um, okay, um, grant round updates. Brian, do you wanna let us know like the status of the, not the GoFundMe, whatever it's called now. And if, if you know how many um, applications we have or any of that stuff. I can definitely do that. I'll log into Mighty Cause right now. It's not looking too good. <laughs> oh, no. uh, yeah, we're not getting a lot of, I think just last year people were more into the causing things and now everybody, yeah, we raised $225 so far. Wow. And uh, I just think as the year went by, like our fundraising just, I think and that's generally across the board uh has gone down and then let me check out where we're at with uh we have a lot of applications let's see but not as much as you would think 
Let's see. So right now, we have about eh, probably about 48 applications. There's some doubles. So probably like 46, 45 that have, that have applied. Great. So, so our I was, fun go ahead. Um, I was speaking with an artist who applied last year and received the award, but um, didn't accept it or like was going to apply, but didn't want to accept it because um, we require a W-9 and it that or w2 and then it becomes taxable income and the amount was like low enough that it didn't warrant adding it to their taxable income but they did say that they've applied for other artist relief grants and there have been a, there have been ways for for whatever the grant is to be a gift so that they don't actually have to file it as taxable income and i was just wondering if that's something that i i don't know we were not able to do I can't because of our city position. I have to have, I have, a, I have to have a W-9 for everything. Okay. I don't report it. Nobody, like I don't report whatever we do out of the ink. I only have to report things over $600. I have to 1099, anything over $600, but I have to have something on file of a W-9. Cause in case like, you know, they, we pay them for something else. And once it hits a $600 limit threshold, I have to do it. So and I have to follow, you know, I'm already in this, like, I have like a city role and a, an ink role. It's like, I have to be to the T with it. Um, I know I, I spoke with an artist as well that had issues with uh, accepting even the LCC grant, which was substantial because they didn't want to jeopardize their, uh, their, their income from unemployment. Okay. Um, but to me, that's like, I, I understand that, but I have to follow, you know, financial rules. Yeah. And you know, and I and I offered workarounds for that particular artist that are not illegal. <laughs> but I have to like I can't I, like they can report it as a gift if they want to, but that's on the individual artist. Mm -hmm. They you know they have to they don't have to report any income. And like I'm writing them a check. It's not like a a credit card transaction or anything like that it's on them their individual self to report whatever income and if they want to, want to report it as a gift that's fine but i have to have a w9 on file yeah. for anybody i give money to yeah and that and that is um i'm on a national board right now and we're talking about and there are laws required by the state of massachusetts different but for a not-for-profit too it's all the same because you know we could as as a not-for-profit we could really get slammed too Never been, um, you know, audited before, but I just want to follow again. Mm -hmm. Like, I do not 1099 our grants, and I do not 1099 anything under $600. But anybody we pay that, like, anybody I, I pay, I get a W-9, which is just on file. Again, I don't file that with the IRS. It's something I just have mm -hmm. on file. Um, and I explain that to artists when they ask questions, if there there's a trepidation. As long as they ask me a question, I'm more than happy to share it. But I do have to have it on file. Um, this is a good, this is good or, um, like clarifying information too because um, unlike uh, past years, artists are eligible to apply for this round and the fall. And so that mm -hmm. between the two potential payments that could push them over 600, which is more mm -hmm. of a reason why they need to submit. Uh, but it's different now. because it's like the city, but it's it different doesn't than the ink. That it's going to get reported like it's just like yes so you have to also think about rachel is like our lcc grant is dispersed by the city which is a different tin and has a different threshold so they have a whole ten dollar threshold of that the city right mm -hmm. and then the ink has a different payment system and that's why we do the covid thing so i'm talking about the ink specifically oh, okay. i don't handle anything that goes to the city i have to have a w9 for it doesn't matter how much it is and they 1099 anything the city has and to. All they need to know okay. is that as long as they're not receiving more than $600, it's not. From the, from the ink. From I'm ink. not going to, uh, and, and I, I don't even 1099 the grants because I can treat them as gifts. It's a donation, like, but I don't, I can't say this stuff on a forward basis, you know, it's like, I have to keep the W-9. Again, the W-9 is just you telling me your name, your address, your TIN number, and a signature 
right? I don't send that to the IRS. I just keep it on file because that's what I have to do. I have to have a copy of it either digitally and I'm supposed to have it physically, but I don't print everything out. So um, it's, okay. it, it's, yeah. So that's, you but know, we don't in any way specify it as income or we don't in any way specify it as income. It's really up to the artist to decide how they record it. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so are we talking about the grant round? So I need help to fundraise. Uh, you know, we have till the end of this month. Um, we've only fundraised $285. I just think because it's gone on so long and then like the, you know, the benefits from the federal government have been, you know, decent that people are not donating as much and don't feel the need as much. Um, specifically in our area, because it's opening up and people are getting vaccinated and like, like I, you know, I just told you that we're gonna have outdoor events again. I think there's a more of an air of hope that things will go back to normal. And I don't think the idea of like the, the artists are suffering or not gonna have as much gigs as, as there as there was last year. Yeah, go ahead, Kathy. I also think that it's hard because we the trans performance and coming off and other things that we have fundraised for for you in general. So it's hard to keep, even though it's different. Sometimes people will think the Arts Council and here they are again, kind of. And I'm just th thinking out loud, but I'm wondering if that might be some of it. Fatigue, yeah, compassion fatigue on a lot of uh, recipient, a lot of um, potential donors. Pretty classic. Yeah. I'd I'd say that the trend is seen all over all over the place that people were really like motivated to give it this time last year when they're like the direct crisis mode and then like the exact same campaign a year later just isn't hitting the same way um like so i i wouldn't um i don't think we're you know doing anything wrong or and and to um brian's point uh it doesn't, it's like not based in reality, you know, like the need of people is still there. This is just more of like a perception thing where, um, I, yeah, people see things opening up or whatever and, or know that like unemployment benefits have been instated for however long and are just not as inclined. Um, but all of that said, I, and I can admit to having not given my, I have not uh, done my uh, contribution or my shares yet. So I'm just gonna open a call to all who, if you've not yet given or sent this to your contacts um, to just share, yeah, Danielle just shared the link. So to give now and to inspire others to give now and share it on social media and send personal emails. And cause every, every bit that we raise just increases the amount that will go to the applicants. Um, and, and when this, oh, when this goes out, checks are made to the Northampton Arts Council with a, in the memo for the Artist Relief Fund or made out to the Artist Relief Fund? Well, you can give right to the mightycause.com link mm -hmm. that, um, um, that Danielle just shared. Okay. But if it, if it's easier to do a check, I believe Brian, it's to Northampton Arts Inc, right? Is the two. And then the line item, I think could be yeah, anything. Brian, you're muted. And the link directly to that page right now. Yes, yeah, so it's Northampton Arts Inc. Um, here is the link with the, all the information uh, to donate normally, like by check. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do here, I'll also just copy and paste this into there. And you just write in the memo line, like what particular program um, that you're interested in. Uh, Occasionally just get a check from somebody who's like, you know, uh, managed fund, which is kind of cool. Uh, I got like a random hundred dollar check yesterday. And it's usually like, you know, 
if it's if it's somebody's fun that like I has a name, I like I have a little donor thing that I've been collecting for whenever we have to do an annual ask. Um, but there's that. I can just use some help. Uh, I gotta I gotta get Kent on a, the radio show with Donna Bell. I guess I'll I'll uh, wait till it's not his birthday anymore, um, and then maybe he can go on there and talk about all the stuff we're doing because. Um, Brian, uh, yeah. How much do we have uh, to award in grants, even if we were not to fundraise above and beyond? We have to determine that in the next part of the meeting, the ink part, because it's ink money. Okay. And now there's a conversation, and I, I provided the uh, with this meeting, I sent, uh, I provided like a financial uh, snapshot, and I'll, I'll provide some more information about the finances, and we can figure it out um right. in the next part of the meeting um i imagine there will be fewer applicants this year possibly uh and so even if there's less money if there are less applicants the gift size might end up being similar so but we should still fundraise as much as we can <laughs> yeah yeah, so if, if we aimed, so last year we gave $330 per applicant. So if we aimed for 300 and if we have, we currently have 48. So if we wanted to give everyone, uh, maybe they're not all qualified, but if we wanted to give everyone um, a grant for that amount, it would be roughly $15,000, which I think is probably higher than we um, have, right? I know we're going to discuss it later, but it's more than we have to give away. Um, especially since I think we used ink money in the last grant round to supplement the, the programs that we were the grants that we funded last time. So we have a, we have a very high fundraising goal compared to what we have, um, brought in thus far. Um, does anyone else have any like strategy ideas for how to raise money this month? <laughs> Um, we can go, uh, classic and I can get a bell and mm -hmm. I can sit in front and Pulaski park and <laughs> try to do that. If you guys want, no, I, you know, basically with me is like, I, I've done a couple, a little bit of work on it, but I've been, you know, once we got the call to go outdoors that we like, we went, you know, we started planning events mostly and then the public arts festival and stuff. So I've been, go ahead, Jesse. Um, just talking with Amy over here, and uh, we would be happy to do a uh, to dedicate a Sunday, um, basically where any any money that we raised would um, go to the Arts Council. Um, so we would offer four items on the menu that that would be available for free um, that people would be able to get you know, whatever, whatever they, they wanted they wouldn't even have to pay for and it. they wouldn't have to pay for it. But if they wanted to make a donation instead of paying for the food, um, those donations would all go towards uh, NAC. Is it, are we specifically looking to um, have funds raised by the end of the month or what's the, what's the kind of time limit that we're working with. Let me share the timeline with you that's on the website and I'll I, keep, I can show you, but we can always change it. Hold on. I mean, Guys, that's, that's, so, that's so generous of you. Thank you so much. Agreed, here, here. Thanks, Amy, too, in the background. <laughs> Happy to. Yeah. It's been done in the past that restaurants have had a, you know, X percent of proceeds goes to such and such a cause. I mean, is, is that something we could do on a town basis? Or is that just, are people hurting enough right now? Yeah, bad idea. Okay. Yeah, where I think it's a great idea. I think it's just a hard, it's hard Long to ask. Timing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Jesse, what do you think? I, I think that it's worth um, 
asking Amy at the DNA um, to, to, to reach out or see if she feels comfortable reaching out to uh, other restaurants and seeing if they could do something. My, my, main, um, my main concern around that is just kind of the time frame. There seems to be like, we, there's not that much time to organize something, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't happen on a more individual level. Um, and you know, maybe, maybe if uh, if if Amy's willing to do that, we could figure out like what Sunday would be best and try to have other places that would be interested in doing it all organized around the same Sunday that we would be doing it. So there would be multiple places around town doing it all on the same day. Although I don't know if that would dilute it or if that would support it. Yeah, I would. I would do. So um, Brian shared that. Uh, so like the applicant deadline is is just in a few days on the fifteenth, and then we currently are advertising that we're going to let them know by the twenty ten days later by the twenty fifth. So it is pretty tight. Yeah. So in terms of actually yeah. like having donations in, we would really need to know by by when by like the. 22nd or I think we'd have to know by the 25th like I could you know because I can send emails out like that it would be okay. you know that's so um um Brian I think or, or Danielle um uh another idea and I don't know has an email already gone out from Northampton Arts Council to our our list of mm -hmm. orders um I mean we could I know like a match is very motivating so if we want to pool a board a board match even a you know even if like collectively it's like five hundred dollars uh, or two hundred and fifty dollars, or something like that, that could um, help motivate. I don't like to make our board donate because it makes it to me uh, inequitable. Um, I want there to be accessibility. I think as our organization does a match to me is better. Like we say, we're giving ten thousand dollars or whatever we determine in the next part of the meeting, because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that everybody can have access to the board and not feel like shame or something that they can't add to the board match. Um, if you want to donate, I encourage it, but uh, I don't, you know, please do, but I don't want to like have some kind of bar set for everybody to, to donate. Like they make me donate on the Academy of Board Music, which I can kind of afford, but because they want to have that to look good for like grant writing that the whole, you know, board match. But I don't think that's, this is a working board and that's all I expect. I expect like people's opinions and people's, you know, yeah volunteering. Yeah, and um, I don't know if you can do that for a, a municipal board. I think, I know for, inc, you know, for not-for-profits, that's one thing that's strong to encourage you, right, in, in terms of makes makes a difference when you're applying for grants and stuff. And I'm, I have on a lot of other not-for-profits and, you know, they encourage, even Highland Valley asks you to give like $5. <laughs> well, yeah. um, we can also re reopen the conversation in the ink board to see if ink board members would do a match and and see it just based on who's there if that's something that's possible yeah it, and it, it i guess what i'm suggesting is it doesn't matter who contributes to the match just that if we have one it it's a helpful mm -hmm. yeah you're right you're right mm. um could i ask a question regarding the fundraising so um could you remind me again when you said that um we'd be the back to normal for the summer activity was it august you said uh yeah august 1st okay. and then 1st. uh yeah that would be that's supposed to be normal but we can still produce right now but it's like half capacity and our capacity of pulaski park is 250 and i have to have and, and uh enforce social distancing and you have to have a mask on um right. which i don't know how we're gonna do but you know we'll see how it so, goes um i would just you know a couple of things regarding the fundraising um so the end of the fiscal year is the end of june for a lot of places so people will be getting 
hit with lots of asks from different, you know, from their alma maters and stuff. And there was just a series of giving days. Um, and I would also, I think it was Jesse who kind of raised the idea about timing and what could be accomplished in a certain amount of time. And so I would certainly have that be a large factor in what could be pulled off. So I would think uh, the things that are jumping to my mind would be things that could be a little bit evergreen over the next few months. Like we could offer a custom badge that people, you, you donate $10, you get a custom badge for your social that you can then display. Um, we are circling around and this will probably come up a little bit, but if we have approved and finalized a new logo, we could put out like, I don't know, we could spend a little bit of money and do stickers or magnets or something and then as an incentive to give and just have those kind of evergreen things along with some local posters where people could QR code and give and just have that be its own kind of like organic thing for a few days and then come up with a like actual campaign that would roll out uh, in the beginning of the fall to fundraise and just for general pot money. Yeah, so I those are all good and those are I, I think those are really good things for annual asks. And there's a lot of different um, pieces that we should uh, look at to put together, I think, for the rollout for our new logo. I think in regards to this particular campaign, I have um, some face masks that are left over from first night mm -hmm. that I can offer as merch. And let me see, I'll show you right now. And not a lot of people have them. Oh, so let me see. I and, have mine. <laughs> well, this is a different one oh. that I can share right here. Um, and I just set, I sent the link. I can offer that right now. Um, uh, you know, this is kind of the time frame uh, we would fundraise like a more of a, a general ask because mm -hmm. you know with the with the fundraising fatigue again, we have to look at you know my event fundraising uh, quarterly schedule. And now I'm gonna right now I'm gonna shift gears and start for summer concert series while I'm fundraising for trans performance. And then I got to start fundraising right after that for first night. So I'm going to just, I'm about to do a triple ask to, yeah. to fund our events, which, you know, in the end come out with like pretty good revenue. So right. I think if so, we, you are, if we sit down and plan for another, like, mm -hmm. like post four Sundays, early spring ask with the type of strategy that you're uh, doing, Eamon, I think that would be more, the most, um uh efficient way to do it um right uh like for the for the place for the events that you're talking about where you're going to go out and fundraise in the near term you're you're going to like to businesses and such right for mm -hmm. so what i'm kind of more thinking of is like the people who could easily you know kick in the five or ten dollar got it broad base cast a wide net and you could tie it in you know you have like a, i supported trans performance and for, you know somebody gets five or ten dollars they get the little social badge it really costs us nothing to make it but then you're going after a wider net with like you know a graphic and people like you know getting involved and da, 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 da. got it yeah so not lumping a whole other effort onto it's like how can we just pocket something out there can we do that when we're pushing ticket sales for those events like trans performance like if you can't attend can you like buy this social badge is that a thing you can do? Well, like, I'm not... right, if, say if um, if I don't know, you could do it. You could do it. You know, a couple of ways. You could just like say, hey, you know, people kicked in, and I think this area and this market would would give five dollars and buy a ticket. But say if a ticket is ten dollars, you know, you on the form you could ask people, you know, for another five, you know, get this badge. You know, it's like so people are. Oh, giving, okay. know, There's a couple of ways to go about it. Um, yeah, I don't think a two ask like for hey support us and buy a ticket in this area for these kinds of events that have been going on for, you know, for a long time. I don't think it's a huge stretch to think that people would do it, but okay, there okay. are also high successes for if somebody's registering and buy a ticket for $10, there's a high return on giving them the option of kicking in another $5 at that time. You're right. I think that's the thing I got to do. I'm, I'm also looking for a new uh, ticketing solution because I used to use brown paper tickets, but they still owe us money from like two years ago. Oh. Um, I mean, last year, because they like, because of COVID, they just like didn't pay us for the last two events. So, wow. yeah. Wow. And I've already inquired a couple of times. <laughs> I have to spend some time on the phone with them to see if they're going to cover it. Oh, God. But, 
And then I know that I had a lot of problems with, uh, I don't like a Bempright at all. So I don't want to go with them. So I have to look around for like another nonprofit ticketing solution because we have to put on trans performance tickets on sale. But I-, I, uh, I guess, Chiming in on that, uh, yeah. I know the Academy is switching from Eventbrite over to Spectrix. Yeah, I know about Spectrix, but it's, that's more for a venue. Um, Mike and I looked into it. It's it's a high cost threshold for us, um, specifically that we don't own a venue. But I'll definitely copy, see. Copy. If, yeah, yeah. If I if there is, I'll I'll look into that. Um, what about I Give Lively? It, what, what was that? What about Give Lively? Give Lively. I'll check that out. Thanks, Delani. Um. Yeah, brown paper tickets is like in a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. See? They were great for many years for us. And then, <laughs> yeah. And it, and I'm um, good thing, like they paid us for the biggest thing, our, our silver cord bowl. And it was like, maybe, maybe like it's like 1200 bucks they owe us, but like the communication and like, I'm not going to put another event on there. That's like a $30,000 event if they can't pay me my 1200 bucks. Right. So I'm thinking about maybe even just running like, uh, when we'd like launch a new website, just like integrating like Shopify or Square and just doing our own ticketing solution and just paying the fees to like whatever, you know, whatever um, uh, whatever transaction fee that we have to pay. So that's a thing we can do as well. Um, except then that, that makes us, we have to make mail tickets to people, which I don't want to do with my time, to be honest. And nor nobody wants to, nobody here wants to run an online store, it's the worst. Yeah. Brian, Jesse added in the chat that Belly of the Beast would put up a, a poster in the window for this fundraiser event on May 23rd. Um, do you have graphic design to share or isn't, is there already a poster for the fundraiser? No, there is kind of, yeah, but there's no poster. There's, a, there's there graphics. Are graphics though. Yeah. So I can try a Facebook fundraiser. So here's some here's some of my thoughts on this. I think because of all the press we got and we're gonna get we, like right now is like we just did we finished two public arts projects and we were on the news. We've been in the paper. We're about to launch another like three more public arts projects. I'm hoping that there's enough there and we just do an ask right now. Maybe people will come out because the Instagram response and Facebook response to any public art going up is like the best post we've ever had. Like people just love to see it, but for some reason businesses don't understand. And I'm not talking about belly of the beast because you guys are like different. When I go ask a bank for money to put up a mural, it's like, oh uh, no. And I don't understand it. It's so, um, but maybe I'm just thinking like the positive press as well as some of the press around like, the the nan uh, vote will give us a little bit of more like in front of people's you know consciousness and then maybe they'll start giving and we'll do another another press this week and next um i will put up an event right now on facebook and i'll make belly the beast the co-sponsor on it on facebook and oh, then uh just starting one and as oh you did it your co -sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> okay i won't do that Sure. I, I mean, you, you can do that. I was just, I was just going to, um, I just started it because I, I can just send you all the graphics or you can just start it and add me as an admin or the art, arts council or whatever. I don't know how that yeah, is. I can, I, I can edit it or something. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to ask if, um, if it's just the arts council Facebook or if I should add you and or Danielle personally. Arts council Facebook. Access. Yeah. Okay. We're all admins on it. Great. I will um, also make a post about the fundraiser and about the um, like the art fundraiser pop up at Belly of the Beast through the museum and pay to boost it. Like I can't don't like I have an I have actually a little bit of a surplus in my marketing budget and I can't donate. I can't donate it out. But if there's like a way, I don't know, Brian, if you can think of a way to invoice me for something as a sponsor. I might be able uh, to, we can talk offline about that or at the very least. I I'll just boost it. Like we'll, 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 I'm going to make the event. Well, Jesse's going to make the event. Jesse, let me make the event and I'll make you a co-host. 
But like to, okay. to come out of the the, 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 the the Northampton Arts Council thing and I'll add you on there and then you can edit it. I'll add you as an admin, you can do add stuff to it. Um, and I'll just run it till the 25th and then I'll boost it with an ad. Don't worry about it, uh, Danielle. You can just jump on there and I'll can- But I have, I, have, I, mean, I have budget that I can allocate. Like I have a surplus budget in my marketing budget for the museum and I uh -huh. boost, I run boosted posts all the time. So if it would help you not to spend ad money to boost it, I can boost it. I'll just add Mead as a, a co-sponsor or something or? No, nope, you don't have to. I'll just, I'll create a post and link to the Oh, event. I get it. And just be like, hey, this is going on. Um, and we also actually, this is sort of public art related, but we are a marketing sponsor for the Windows into Art in Amherst. So I don't know if you accept marketing sponsors. We should just talk about that separately um for the public art festival but we can be a marketing sponsor for it and then you can allocate that money towards whatever you want i just needed uh, if, i don't know if you're allowed to it's a little late i just you know wish we had more time in previous months to discuss this stuff and we just didn't and it's okay and uh now where we are where we are and we're gonna have hustle and i feel like it's a little bit last minute and I would love that, but I'm not gonna do much marketing for the festival because I want I don't want people to come to it because I don't want the artists to be compromised while they're painting the all the different elements by um, people like crowding to them and like, you know, possibly, you know, passing COVID. And I discussed this in the past. So, but I'm gonna do a big post uh, after a big press, you know, junket for the arts festival about where everything is. Um, Cause I wanna just make sure the artists are safe because we're still in that like weird time right now. Um, so we can plan for when we do that, we can do a co-host thing or something, Danielle. Um, and well, I'll double my efforts on putting together some stuff with Jesse. I don't know what Sunday we can do Jesse with what you're talking about, which is amazing and really generous. And I thank you so much. The 23rd, uh, I think would probably be 23rd. Yeah. 23rd. Okay. And then, uh, you know what I want and I've already read, reached out to, do you know, River Valley market, they have the co-op, they have that like round to a dollar thing. How do we get on there? <laughs> like I round my dollar up every time I go there to whatever nonprofit. Um, and I've reached out to them and they've never got back to me on how do I get on that list. I can help well, with that. I have a connection with the manager. I will call her and talk to her. That's awesome. Thank you, Lori. Let it me doesn't have to be for this. What, what is that? Cornucopia. Right also town. Does that. Oh, sorry. Um, Cornucopia also does that. So uh, I could talk to Nate about, um, about that. Either one, that would be great. Like, or both? You know, yeah, both. Either one or both. Like I don't like I know that's just a long term thing. Um Lori, if I you think because I can also ahead. talk to you know Barbara and Gary. I mean, my number's like two two seven. And so I was one of their so if you need, have any questions, I can always talk to people there too on their board. Uh either way. Okay, I think I'll okay. do it. Start. I'm a member too. I don't know if, if any, if all of, if a bunch of people might be members, I don't know if it makes sense to say like that we have, you know, all different, I don't know, we can say a number of us are members and want to make the ask. So you can feel free to sign my name onto any request as well for River Valley Co-op. And Barbara Fingal was a member, remember, Brian? Uh -huh. She was one of the founding board members of, of, you know, from Bart's, but she was one of the founding board members at River Valley, so. Well, wait, so do we want to write a letter as a board in that case, rather than my talking to the manager, which I'm happy to do? Well, you know, so why don't you just start first with on the personal level? I will. I think that would be. I will. And, and Jake, you will do cornucopia? Yeah, I'll reach out to Nate. Okay, great. Okay, I've got myself a note. Take care of it. Thanks so much, everyone. Jake, I think you're muted. I saw your mouth moving, but didn't hear anything.
I'm just talking to Amy on the side. Oh, <laughs> okay. Jesse, it's Jesse. I'm so sorry. Thank you. As long as you don't call me late for dinner. No problem. <laughs> My mistake. Okay, so thanks everyone. We've got all hands on deck to get our, our grant um, up, and, up and running, I suppose, um, or our, our grant fund for the grant round. I don't think we have any other updates on, on that front. Okay, so on to board membership. Do we have any updates, Brian? Do you have any updates, Brian? I don't have any updates on board membership. Uh, a retired lawyer who recently moved here. Hold on, I got like somebody who's, um, I kind of <laughs> brushed off earlier this year because I didn't want another old white guy on the board. Was like, what's going on? <laughs> and, uh, He's working with uh, the mayor's office to see if he's going to be uh, valuable to the board. So that might be a new person. Let me see. Where is his uh, outlook right now? The name. And then there is new. You like re you re you reapplied. You're back on the board. You re upped, right, Danielle? Freeman re upped. Um, Ellen, I think, will be um, st stepping down and uh, after the biennial. That's what she mentioned to me. I don't know if it's final. Uh, and then there's this, this gentleman that is uh, interested. Let's see. Um, John Garber. No, he's, an, he's a, a lawyer that still practices. John Garber is part of Weinberg and Garber PC. Roundhouse Plaza. Let me see. Ooh. Let's see. Uh, oh, I know what happened. We were supposed to have like a thing and then he like backed out. You know, lawyers are great for not for profits. They're always looking for board members to give up. I mean, not yeah. for profits for legal advice, but this is kind of different. So, no. Uh, yeah. So, ask him to join a subcommittee. <laughs> yeah good idea to start off um so that gentleman john garber which i'm gonna go and probably like look at social media and see what the deal is and look at his application see if he's any back art background uh and then that might be a new possible member which is good and then uh if we can, you know, redouble our efforts to get some more board members on, that'd be great. We can share that that, that letter again. But uh, I know that um, Danielle was reappointed, Freeman was reappointed, and then um, everybody else is good right now. Um, that's about all the updates I have for that. I'll share. Um, I'll share the outreach email again in case anyone wants to share it with friends and colleagues. Um, I do think it would be really great if we know, if we know, for example, that a couple of people are in the queue to wait until they start coming to meetings or invite them to our trainings um, once we start doing equity or DEAI trainings with Gabe and Jan, so. Um, okay, sorry. Um, does anyone have the agenda? My agenda just closed. I don't know if anyone has that up. Oh, I had it up just a second. Thanks, Brian. Okay. Um, so anything else on board membership? From anyone, questions or ideas? Okay. Well, if anyone does want to chat about that, I do, I do have that initial outreach letter, which I'm happy to tweak and I'll just forward it around to everyone um, later. Um, and you can forward it if you can think of anyone you think would be a great addition. Um, next step was online communications, which is me and Eamon, but I certainly don't have any updates. So Eamon, I don't know if you do. Uh, nope. I don't. 
we're in like the second step of the design process uh and uh aim has provided feedback and i'm waiting to to put my feedback with his together and go forward on the next stage but we're making progress slowly but surely um, and that's in regards to the new logo for the arts council great um poet laureate so it's Kathy, Ellen, Kent, and Karen. So Kathy, anything on the Poet Laureate? You're muted. Um, yeah, I think the um, call is, the call's out right now, correct, Brian? And it's June 15th, date of entry. There we are. The Where posters for it look great. I'm curious if anyone is doing any outreach to, to schools or what the outreach looks like to let people know about how to apply. Yeah, Say not... that question again, please, Danielle. I was just wondering if there was any outreach to local schools about the Poet Laureate, like if we're sending this call to teachers or principals or- Kathy, can you speak to that or should I? You can speak to it. Um, or maybe Tulani wants to. Tulani, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, you can go, Lori. Okay, so we, well, in our letter to the, in the school committee's letter to the principals, um, maybe not in the letter, in the communication we are trying to have with the principals of all the Northampton schools, um, one of the things that we have mentioned or will mention, whether we, when we communicate with them or if we already have, is that we support the poet laureate, youth poet laureate program and that you know we're behind it and we will help in any way we can. So far it seems only to be relevant in the high school. And that communicate that was mine to call and I have a meeting set up with the principal of the high school by phone. Thursday morning at 11 o'clock. So as a school committee, we do support it, but there's not really any information yet. Is that about right, what you have to lie? Right. Yeah, okay. Wasn't there a, re a response from the, the principal of JFK for a, an online meeting as well? Or was I mistaken, was it the high school principal? I have a call into the high school principal a call scheduled for the high school principal Thursday. Freeman talked to the principal of JFK who said, so now it turns into a report on the school committee, right? Is that what this is becoming? Just with everyone's permission before I keep going? Okay. Is that okay? Um, the principal of JFK asked Freeman to wait because he's just organizing MCAS so Freeman was gonna call him again in a week or two. Um, I don't know how Tulani's done. I have three times called the principal of Jackson Street who did respond to our letter and I have not gotten a call back. I live around the corner from there. So I may show up there tomorrow and see if I can at least put a face to a name and try to communicate with her. Uh, I. I had the high school and she reached back to me and said the same thing as the middle school testing. Oh, and you had the high school? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she, but you got, we got two different answers here. So that's very interesting. <laughs> what answer did you get? I was told wait until June. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And I've got a call. Well, what, hmm. why don't Tulani and I talk about this not at a board meeting? Yeah, we can chat about I'll that. We'll work it out. Forward. Is that okay, everyone? Yeah, that, but everything else, I haven't, uh, and then the elementary school I was to reach out to was uh, Bridge, and And then it was Ryan me, Road for me. And she gave me two extra contacts for other school teachers as well to help facilitate pushing things forward. But for the going back to the Youth Poet Laureate, Bridge, the elementary school doesn't help if we're looking for middle and high school. Right. So I think that that's a different email ask. Um, I think my confusion was, I know that there's like all of our information was given to us. I just didn't realize that we were also actively, I thought there was already like 
an email or contact sent out from us generally as a board to support the youth call laureate but i can actively do a little bit more to reach out to the high school and find other avenues i think that i should call ready. and cancel my meeting and let let's you and i talk in person uh with not in a board meeting does that sound okay because i feel like we're taking up everyone's time with banter well, that's, not that's okay that's okay i've uh this, like i've taken the, the image that we've all agreed upon and I've made it double-sided and in Spanish on one side. And then I've uh, had um, Paradise made four by six postcards. And then the only school that's relevant because the Youth Poll Laureates for rising seventh graders and to rising 12th graders is that the only one I can share those postcards with is JFK Middle School. Um, you're not allowed to send postcards home with the high school students. So there is a poster we can bring to one particular lockbox in the high school. Um, I don't know if uh, anyone knows how to connect with the high school students in a better way, unless we have somebody go there and like talk about it uh, at like an assembly or something. And unfortunately, I'm not going to Tai Chi anymore, but my Tai Chi teacher teaches English at the high school, Suzanne um, Strauss. Mm -hmm. I, haven't been, I haven't gone to Tai Chi for a while, so I'm a little, um, I'm under, she might be able to kind of, I, I could send her a note or something and ask the best way to, to, to publicize this. I can make a couple of calls. I graduated 10, 11 years ago. Mm. <laughs> so. But I'd be willing to, you know, if you, I, I could send Suzanne, I don't mind give, sending her and asking her the best way to kind of, you know, mm -hmm. publicize it among the classes. I haven't had like an issue con like getting a hold of somebody. Somebody will at least give an answer. Like we're too busy, we're, you know, or whatever. But there has, I can make a, a couple more calls to direct teachers who yeah. still love me. <laughs> Thanks so much, Juhani. Okay, so you're all set now. If not, uh, let me know. If not, I can always send something to Suzanne just because she's great. And she teaches English. In fact, uh, all yeah. during, you know, for a year during COVID, she'd send us all a poem of the day, different poets. We get, that sounds just like yeah. her. <laughs> Every day. Uh, can I jump in with a couple, couple questions? Um, have we asked... Karen, if uh, she would be willing to do that, to go to a high school and be uh, like an in-person thing. I don't know if, um, you know, she would be welcomed to English um, classes and or if they would be willing to have her at an assembly to reach more people, um, but maybe maybe tapping her to see if that would be something that she would do would, would be helpful. Also, um, outreach to Big Brothers Big Sisters, I think would be a good avenue because that's getting them from the other direction, not just from school. Likewise, I don't know if there are any um, like sports leagues that aren't through the school that it would make sense to send the letter to since it's written. We can just like find those additional contacts or other clubs students might be a part of outside of school. Or hang out at the skateboard park and pass out postcards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, Any, anything else on the Poet Laureate? Uh, public art. Jesse, Brian? Uh, we had Sabrina last weekend. We hosted her. Uh, she painted a wonderful mural on the Kirkland Ave, which is right between Downtown Sounds and Lime Red Tea House. If you haven't seen it, please stop by. Uh, she enjoyed our company and our support and she's lovely and I hope to have her back again and I love the work there. Um, that was made uh, possible by a grant we got from the state but also my interactions with Jordy Harrell 
who is the building owner. Um, so I, uh, I know him from the work I do with this thing, but I also know uh, him from, he's a friend of a friend kind of thing. So it, it's been working out pretty well. Uh, the next thing that happened was beginning mid last week and ending today. Kim Carlino uh, has painted um, many entrances to the bike trail in Florence and they're all floral designs. Um, I can share some pictures in here if people want to see them. But uh, she did a very like uh, nice floral based kind of graphic y, uh, kind of linking them all together uh, design, which was really cool on the bike trail. Um, kicking off Thursday, which is in two days, we'll be hosting a total of 10 artists this upcoming weekend. Um, we're gonna be painting all the traffic utility boxes in downtown Northampton. Uh, starting on top of the hill in front of Smith College Art Museum, coming down to the two boxes that are at the light where West Street, Elm Street, Route 10 and Main Street connect. There's two boxes there. There's a box in front of Florence Bank uh, and there's a box in front of Spoletto's at the intersection of Bridge Street and Holly Street. Um, there's also a box in front of the Hempist at the intersection of Old South Street and Con Street. There's also a box at the intersection of Old South Street and New South Street, which is Route 10, the light there. They're all at intersections of lights. And then there's a light in front of North MCMC, North End Community Music Center. And that box is going to get painted as well. We have eight different individual artists coming to paint those eight boxes. And then on Sunday, the blocks that are in front of Sylvester's restaurant are going to be painted as well. Oh. Um, and then at the end of that, I'm gonna have some film or video and images put together and we'll have uh, a nice um, kind of uh, map will, are, will also be created. I'm gonna update the cultural district map and do a little press junket just to get people to go to those after the fact. I just really um, wanna be focus on the health of the artist. Hmm, good idea. Um, so that's what's happening with public art right now. Uh, long term, I'm getting the bridge art fixed that is on um, the bridge on the Spoleto Roost side. It's been hit a couple of times. I'm working with an insurance company and adjuster to get that fixed. Uh, I'm also hoping to use the cultural district grant for public art next year and some money that's being donated to the city for, for public art, which is about $10,000 to initiate a public bus stop, basically. Uh, well, what are they, bus shelter? Uh, I wanna do, and I was gonna tell Jesse about this when we get to meet, um, and I can show you this thing called Creative Shelters, which has hap happened in um, Portland, Maine, and I wanna kinda mm -hmm. take that project and bring it here and uh, take the three bus shelters or four in downtown Northampton and then hire installation artists to like really make them really interesting um, and put together a public art subcommittee and then find four installation artists. But they're probably gonna be the most money ever. So uh, I can show you this. I'll put a link right here. You guys can check out the project that they did in Portland. Um, and uh, the particular donor that's giving the city the money is, is interested in it as well. And the city was uh, on board with it, but here you go. There's that, you can see what they did for the bus shelters. Um, and I'm thinking about the bus shelter at Smith, the bus shelter in front of the academy, the bus shelter in front of the courthouse, the bus shelter in front of the, uh, the post office. And, uh, so those are the things that, I, that have been on my mind, as well as trying to create more opportunities for more mural artists downtown, if I can get any contact with different private, um, private building owners or different spaces. Because uh, through the application for the Public Arts Festival, we got about 45 applications. We got to see some really new interesting artists that applied. And there's two of them in particular that we wanna really Ha, give a bigger mural to and um, the two of them were Kiani Douglas and Caitlin Hurd both of them were really cool 
just to get to see some of the the finalists and then through because of availability and stuff we had to pick eight people to come but uh i can show you some of the images if you guys want to see but uh we had we got a lot of applications we have to go through a lot of different work which is nice it's always fun to like you know curate and look what people's ideas are and that's kind of the updates any questions or comments about our ideas yeah i you know one of the things in terms of diversity and i know that um uh, i'm part of a group in terms of making northampton age friendly and dementia friendly and signs and uh contrast and different things are really important in terms of enabling people with visual difficulties and other kinds of disabilities to maneuver in spaces um, is there anybody that uh, that kind of uh, any of these artists has anybody been asked about what do they think about um, you know, in terms of making making like because sometimes things are overwhelming to to a lot older people and, and um, trying to find your way around places, even around making so curbing you can see things decently, et cetera. But making enhancing the public spaces so that pe it, it enables everybody um, to be able to maneuver through easily. Do you anything uh, about that? Do, do you have people that ha have any understanding, any artists who under have any understanding about how make it making spaces age friendly or 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 dementia or disability friendly? It wasn't something that we yeah. uh, addressed in this particular mm -hmm. instance because we were doing um uh a, like a a canvas that was just more decorative than yeah. functional. I yeah, think it's I something that. that keep in mind with the bus shelters though. And I'm glad that you brought it up for that particular yeah, thing. Yeah, there, there are things, there, there's concepts that are meaningful to, to people. And I think, you know, in terms of color contrast, blah, 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 straight lines, because it is, I mean, in terms of making our outside, um, just in, ter in terms of finding your way around and understanding things, because people, I mean, even traveling downtown, it's like, whoa, you know, when you're trying to, to follow things. And even though it's exciting and it's interesting, but I think looking at the wide array of, of people, trying to understand where people are ma making life easier for people. But yeah, I just just some thoughts. I can even send you some, some you know, guidelines from um, the environmental guidelines. Please send me those guidelines if it has to do with like including that into design work. That would be yeah, really good. Yeah, I think is there just conscious because if we're talking about diversity, I mean we think about you know it's it's yeah. diversity. So I think it's making us a, a friendlier community to everybody because even if it's age friendly, it's friendly to everybody. Everybody. Is there a voice like that's echoing this on the reimagining downtown? Um, design project I, that's going on I don't know, to be honest with you i mean i'm i'm going to bring it up tomorrow because we're having a you know age friendly and well that's really important kathy good, somebody should be joining those meetings and bring something like that up because good point um the the accessibility piece is important because it's downtown northampton no i agree, um, I agree. i'm I'd like know, to think I, that marie and people would be a part of it but i don't think that they okay. can't assume ever anything you know it's like because it. you know you know how it works in politics is the the squeaky wheel gets gets the oil and yeah. you gotta bring you gotta bring your 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 perspective to the the table for well, it to be heard. It's just to be um, a part of it should be part of the the mix and stuff in terms of if we reach out. Yeah, to everybody. I wish everybody would be able to just to think about that all the time. But that's you know thanks for yeah. bringing that awareness to me right now when I'm thinking about that public shelter yeah. project. Yeah. Yeah, because I think, you know, there are ways of, of not that it has to be dowdy or anything, but there are ways in terms of, of, um, of a lot of ideas that make just enhance the, the, the uh, surroundings and make it easier for anybody to move maneuver around. Yeah. Kathy, I don't know if you're um, familiar yet. They, they just kind of started, but there's a group called um, Main Street for Everyone that oh. is pushing back against the um, the limited uh, options that were given to the public for the Main Street redesign. Um, and they're currently in the process of uh, talking about designs for further options that would be more pedestrian and bike friendly right. than, okay. than what the city has. So if you're at all interested or if when you're, when you're talking with your group that you're gonna meet with, oh, good. if anyone there is interested, I can give you a contact. Lovely, thank you so much, yeah. It was the worst. 
how did it go from what it was to that i'm sorry it was really that was upsetting it was like again with the squeaky wheel i think they like listen to all the business owners about why are the business owners the biggest voice in downtown you know i uh, it's you know Nobody you need thinks that people actually live here too it's like well you gotta have people walk into your business it's like it's about foot traffic it's not about car traffic uh, it's i I'm mm. but it also in terms of foot traffic when you've got all this kind of stuff in terms of you can't even fight when you're walking around in terms of seeing when the curbing's coming up and different things like that there's like whoa you know it's it's all all this kind of stuff that 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 enable us to maneuver especially when there's people riding their bicycle on the sidewalk because there's no bike lane because they're they're threatened to ride on the the their bike on the and and the the four lane thing that's not even demarcated to to in to to show you it's four lanes. So anybody who's never driven downtown, who's from out of town, doesn't know what they're doing. Oh, for sure. And it's it's I call it the gauntlet, basically. It's like it's a video I mean, I game. Drive downtown. I hate downtown. I'm never driving down there. I hate it. <laughs> it's crazy making. All right. Well, thank you for the public art update and Kathy for bringing accessibility to the fore. Um, it looks like we already talked about schools. I'm assuming that volunteering is tabled. So if okay, there I'm aren't any- about if we have to go and be, and we have to if enforce, you know, any anything over, as volunteers over at Pulaski Park. <laughs> it's going to oh. be an interesting thing. Brian, you're on mute. Yep, I'll discuss that with you. And if anybody here wants to volunteer to come help us prime some uh, traffic utility boxes, me, Steve, and Peter will be priming uh, all the traffic utility boxes for the next two days. Mm. Um, I thought Freeman and some of the, the uh, Friends of Northampton Trails yeah. volunteer base would be helping us, but they basically, we used them all up with the Florence bike trail thing. They were very helpful to Kim over there. So they're a little bit... Uh, um, what is it called? Volunteer exhausted? What, what was the other one? What do you say? Like uh, passion fatigue. It's volunteer. Yeah, fatigue. volunteer fatigue. So we'll be out there uh, in overalls, painting all the traffic utility boxes the, the next two days. So if you feel like not staring at Zoom for like a couple hours, just text me because <laughs> we can find something for you to do. Um, that's about it. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, Tulani. Sorry, I was just thinking that painting the boxes, I think is great. Uh, this is not for, for tomorrow, obviously, or for Thursday, but maybe in the future, would it be a good idea to like move it to a Saturday where kids could also come in and volunteer and get like, you know, like National Honor Society students can get in like our opportunities and just be part of the city? Okay. We've done the last time we did this event uh, was when before COVID, we actually had elementary school children doing a workshop that was interactive. Um, and we built cubes, four sided. And then each class that we like pre booked would come in and like work with this like facilitator and painted this cube. And it was like my favorite thing I've ever seen. It was like, it was, it was like amazing work on both sides and that each side was different, even though the same colors and the same person. Um, and then those are the cubes that you see on the bike trail going towards East Hampton. So the one that was, was, was made by the students is that unfortunately the only one that didn't survive the last two winters because a plow truck just like hit it, which was really sad. Um, so, but yeah. Anytime we can do that with the Public Art Festival, it's like number one. But again, with the COVID, I'm trying to it's like lease interaction. But next year, if we're looking good, it's the one thing that we love is like when I do public art stuff or when we, we get together is like engaging students. And I like your idea for the National Art Honor Society or something like that, because uh, we haven't done anything like this with high school. Um, and that would be really interesting to, to see what we can do. And then when, we, when we're working on this for next year, but I think we're looking at the bus shelter thing, but we can, we're looking at, we're thinking about getting a wall where everybody can paint. And uh, I just got to find a little bit more money. 
and uh, I'm really trying to paint that wall that's like uh, next to the police station when you walk down to the, the back of the basement. You know what I'm talking about? It's just a big white wall there. And I really want to have a huge community mural there. I will try to get through the city on that one. I don't know how successful we can be. And that can be the end of the, the public art update. I love painting things in the city. Great. So I'm going to make a motion to close the municipal meeting unless anyone had anything else they wanted to discuss. Okay, so motion to close the municipal meeting. Second. Okay, favor, votes, yes, do we approve? Great, thank you. Yep. Um, and then I move to open the ink meeting. Do we have to move to open the ink? Or? Move that we open the ink meeting. Oh, thanks, Kathy, second. <laughs> I think of the, oh no, uh, Rachel, we're, there's a couple of us who are inkies. Okay, second. Second. Open. Okay, great. It's open. Great. Brian, over to you for the financial snapshot. Uh, okay, so financial snapshot, I shared that with everybody. Is there any questions about it? I can share my screen again right now. Just so we can take a look at it. you guys can ask some questions. Uh, everybody can ask some questions. I just gotta stop using that gender thing. All right, share screen. Here's this. I think that, no, that's not it. I just signed up for that entry for everyone. Thing, so Let's see, stop share. Sorry, having some some Zoom tab difficulty. Share screen, where is it? Here we go. All right, everybody can see it? Yep. Okay. So the most important number to look at, and you can ask questions about anything you want, but I'm just for, if we wanna expedite this, but like, you know, let me know. I simplified this so it doesn't have the city account thing because we're not, we're not making any decisions about city money. We're just, look, we're focused on decisions about the ink money, okay? So the most important thing is this total unrestricted funds, okay? Which is $68,000 right now. Um, and that gets us through paying the production team until um, October 1st or September 30th, okay? Uh, and then we have, you know, we'll have money from Trans Performance, hopefully. And we'll have money from First Day coming in, hopefully, you know? Uh, but in general, you know, you see this, you can ask me questions about it. These are the, the balances in the accounts right now, or as of uh, whatever it says the data on this. Um, the first checking account is our operating account. It's how I like usually the money gets it, taken in there. Don't like checks go out of there for like paying artists, for paying donation, like our, our donations go in there, whatever we get around fundraising and then paying for the ink goes into that Florence checking account. The savings account is to hold on to the checking account. It's kind of just sits there, not getting us any interest. The money market is kind of like our padding uh, in case that we have an emergency. And this People's Bank checking account is like any buttons that People's Bank sells, they just deposit the money in that checking account. So I don't touch it. So it's another like safe haven, right? Income, we got a $500 coming in from the festival's grant. That's for the public arts festival. Somebody still owes us. If you, if you see my, sc I'm scrolling right here. Somebody owes us from first night sponsors because they haven't paid us. Some four Sunday sponsors that haven't paid us. We have a grant coming in soon for the public arts festival. And then this community programming grant is gonna be for summer park series. And also um, we're helping program uh, the strong Avenue thing. We're helping subsidize uh, the uh, jazz on Wednesday nights. So there's programming when they have the summer on strong thing. Um, I took some of the budget of that to help out that thing because I think it will be helpful for the whole town. Um, so our total assets are here. And then these are things that we got to come up that, are, that, are, that we have to pay soon. We have to send a check to the city to cover Steve and Peter's salary for one financial quarter, which is three months, July, August, September, okay? This is our overage check we have to send the city to take care of the overage that we did for the grant round, okay? 
and then it's going to, I think it's going to be around 7,500. It might be more for the public arts festival, all the things that we have to pay for that. And then I know we're going to like be, uh, we're around there for the summer park series. So exactly what that is, maybe more. Um, this money right here is uh, restricted grant funds. Okay. I think this is arts EZ 19 for some reason. All these people haven't applied for their funds yet. It's expired, oh. but I think we approved the couple of extensions, but I keep it in there. I want to encumber it until we finally know. Uh, we're two years out, but maybe not. So I projected for this that we would give at least $10,000 to the COVID-19 fund, right? But we're going to vote on this. And this is why I'm having this discussion with everybody right now, okay? We don't also know the PTO share. So those are two things we don't know, okay? Brian, um, I could, when, when does um, the funds uh, get released? Like how long do you hold on to like? It's it's supposed to be till the, so if it was RCZ 2019, they have until June 30th, 2020. So we're almost two years past, like we're, we're like over a year, almost a year past the extension, right? Well, 2019, that's yeah, 2020. So we're almost two years past, uh, you know, another year after the deadline was. And just um, in, internally, like in the past, how long have you held on before releasing? Usually some people come out of the woodwork out of nowhere without an email. We usually pay them, but I'm just holding that on there just in case. Like I don't, you know, yeah. um, I know there's extensions approved. I could go through my emails and find them. I just don't know off the top of my head when I was making this, and I didn't take the time to do it. Um, I just for safe, better safe than sorry, I like encumber that. And then I'm saying like at least two years. And I think when it turns into June 30th, 2022, I think we can just add that back into the operating fund. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do you um, try to contact those people and say, hey, you want it or not? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I, or I can, I can reach well, out to them. Work. I mean, if you think yeah. anyway, no, I hear you. All right. So these are all their encumber funds that we fundraise particularly for, like we have donations. Actually, there's a thousand in here, I think. Oh, this is restricted. Yeah, yeah. So there's a thousand, but we received a donation for this. So, um, so I, this, yeah. For the 10K that you're proposing, possibly for for the relief fund, is that something that we could announce as a match? Yes, yes. Okay. So that would be yeah. kind of great, right? And we can just say from a private source or from... Or no, the, you're or the, say that the, the arts council is going to ma you know match ten thousand, but I like I don't you know it's like what we're seeding it with, you know. Okay. So we can okay. say something like that. Uh, but yeah, we could say that. Like we're looking to put up that, and we're looking for matching funds. But then, like I don't know how matching if you don't make the the, the, the like say we're looking for ten like like if we. Usually with the matching thing, right, is like the people don't donate if we don't make the goal, right? Or can you yeah, be more flexible you're, with that? You're the, if you're the one making the match, that's your prerogative. You know, you can, we can, okay. like, we're not going to give this money unless we get these donations. But like, it, essentially, it's all just marketing. Like, we know. So there's no, there's money. no there's no particular rules that say that we like, you know, we can't do it if we don't get the match. It's just marketing, it's marketing. stuff. Cause I've never done a matching grant. So I don't know if there's rules around it. A no matching rules. grant is different than a matching like fundraising in incentive. Okay. You know? Okay. This is just saying like arts Inc is committing $2,500. So that'll be matched dollar for dollar. So like give now and your donation is doubled, you know, cause we're saying like, we're just going to give this if you give it, but we know internally we're going to give it no matter what. So. Okay. So the J Scott Brandon fund is going to probably turn into, um, which is uh, a fund that, uh, Steve's friend died, who was like his oldest and closest friend from his band and stuff, like really close. And then there was this like uh, really amazing um, kind of memorial service for him where like people just donated a bunch of money to the Arts Council because of how they knew how much that was important to this gentleman um, who loved trans performance, blah, blah, blah. 
So all these people donate all this money and Steve is gonna basically is working on this pitch for the board with that's not ready with, uh, and it's working with Northampton High School and it will be with the, all the music teachers there. And the idea is to provide scholarships for people uh, in need to go to music classes at NCMC or at Downtown Sounds and it can pick, it can be voice or anything. So, um, and the idea was that like Steve and his friend came from a really difficult background and like music was a thing that like, kind of like put them in a place where they were able to achieve what they've achieved in life. So he really thinks that that's the idea behind it. So the different music teachers at Northampton High School will identify um, students in need that have, that want to pursue um, music, but don't have the funds to like have those extra classes. Cause that really puts people ahead when you can have like training. Cause I had the issue of like public school and in uh, Springfield or I only went to like one music class a week and I couldn't afford private lessons to go and, and practice uh, my instrument or whatever it may be. So uh, I think it's a cool idea. And so those donations were earmarked the J. Scott Brandon Fund because that's the, gay, the, the name of the person that died. But I think they're gonna basically petition the board to change it to like whatever the Northampton, you know, music scholarship fund or whatever they decide to name it. So that's, that's encumbered there. The, you know, the, everybody knows the BJ Goodwin Memorial Fund. Those are encumbered funds. And then the Poet Laureate and the Youth Poet Laureate. Um, that's actually $500 a year, but we got a donation for two years. But I, I think that's encumbered for 500 for FY22. So that's where we are. So right now, the total unrestricted funds is $68,000. Um, here's some more economics. I'm just going to paste into the chat of kind of like, where we are with how much we have to make in a year versus what we have to pay our staff. Uh, and that is going right here. So that's what we made like last year. We made about $72,195 from trans performance first night and four Sundays virtually, okay? Um, we didn't make any money, money on Summer Park Series. And then for the upcoming salary for Stephen Peter for now, all next year is 77,868,000. We also got a $30,000 grant from the community foundation to pay their salary. So we have $68,000 in the bank. That's about the money we raised from the three events for production, which there's other things that we produce, but those are the ones that are fundraisers. Um, and then, you know, you know, what I, I would suggest from looking at what we're doing, because we do have if the trend of COVID stays as it is now with vaccinations, et cetera, in Massachusetts, there is a potential that we'll be seeing the same kind of income we were seeing before, specifically that we have a possibility of having a really successful first night. But I think that, you know, I would recommend minimums and like maybe like either same funding as we did last year, or is like for, for the PTOs and for, for the COVID relief fund. But I wouldn't suggest that we raise it just because we, you know, we normally raise much more money than that. Like we usually raise $30,000 at four Sundays, $30,000 at trans performance and like $50,000 at first night. Brian, can you remind me, um the how much we allocated for spring grant rounds it, not last year because I, I well it, yeah including last year but knowing that last year was different than most so let me see in the past I'm just gonna go search the website because I don't have it right in front of me uh, what is this we allocated the most ever in 2019, which was $20,000, but then that was because we had probably the best first night before that. Um, I can go through and tell you, but it was basically, we used to allocate about 12,000. It kicked up to like 15,000 for RTZ. It peaked at 20,000 two years in a row because we started to produce first night. Um, and then last year we committed $10,000 to COVID relief because it was a COVID year. 
we probably end up giving a little bit more because we wanted to get to that specific number above 300. Um, but I think it was about 10 to $15,000. Um, but my suggestion, if I'm looking at the trans performance financials is, uh, which I have, if you guys want to, I can also share is that we gave out 9,600 last year to, to divide amongst there. And I, you know, they might be happy with less because they didn't do any work this year with, with trans performance, you know? And uh, the 9,600 divided by six was like a good amount, a chunk for each particular, it was like $1,600 per PTO. So those are the things to, to, to keep in mind when we're, you know, voting on or figuring out what we need to vote on. Now, do we have enough ink members here? We have one, two, three. I think we do have enough actually. Let me double check. Missy Hunter and George, if they're still around. No, we only, we have Rachel. I did had did we vote on Rachel adding on? I don't have Rachel on my board list as the ink board because we can only have two. And right now the two board members that are on both are Freeman and, and Danielle. Yeah. So in the end, you weren't on the ink board yet, Rachel, because we wanted Freeman to be both on, because he's the treasurer to be both on the ink board and the, the municipal board. I know that was confusing. Well, so there's just two of us then here. I'm pretty sure I was. You, you were, but then somehow, I, I know, I remember you got added. I do remember that. But then There I was a, yeah, go ahead. There was a point where you said you couldn't be on the municipal board and we were waiting for uh, the, the city to chime in and they finally did. And we were like, oh yeah, we're gonna move you to the ink board so you can still be part of our board. And there was a point where you were said, they told, the city said you can still be on the municipal board and you're still on the municipal board. And that Freeman was gonna become the treasurer and we can only have two board members on both the municipal and the, the ink board. And we, we had to go with Danielle and Freeman because he's the treasurer. And oh. um, Danielle's the chair. I didn't know that happened. Okay, I'm not on the ink board. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I just I checked. That. I thought you were too, and I just double checked, and you're not on there. Um, so we have to table those. We can't vote on anything. Yeah, just just two of us. Why um why can't we have more than two? Members? Conflict of interest. Oh. Yeah. It was determined in 2012 that we can only have yeah. two members. It used to be that everybody who was on the like municipal board could be on the ink board, and then they changed it where as soon as they became the, the director, yeah. they said they have we do the conflict of interest. We yeah, can only have you have two to be people. really careful with yeah, yeah. So that that was a compromise and stuff like that. That the two in terms of um, and every different other. I think it's every. Uh, we're not a board, well, whatever, every other council uh, in town has to be like that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So I'm, Brian, can I move to appro approve what you suggested by email? Yes, yes, yeah. you can email all the board here. I'll just send the- Or do you, you wanna send the financial snapshot and your proposal to the ink board by email and I'll move to approve it and then here. someone can chime in and second. I can second, I guess I even can. Okay, so I'll just move Patrick in second and we'll just get a vote uh, of hopefully I'm imagining folks will agree. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what I recommend for, you know, I, I'm, I would recommend $1,200 or $1,000 for PTO since they didn't actually show up and do anything. That's but you guys can say something different than that. Um, maybe we don't want to, we maybe want to give as much as we can. But again, I'm, this is the ink board just asking the municipal board for, for guidance. It's like we, we can still see, talk about it. Yeah, but you know, the, the thing about giving to the PTOs and maybe now that we have Lori and, you, and Thilani on, on the, I, it would be great to see what they're doing with our funds for, for arts in the schools. I have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Um, for a while we had Mary Clark on our board and she was you know, really active in the PTO and we would get updates, but it's yeah. been a while since she's been on the board. 
Um, yeah, I just think it would be nice to get some sort of we get what 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 are you doing? Let us know, you know, with that with the money. <laughs> so you know, I'm gonna recommend ten thousand the COVID art to relief, mm -hmm. and then seventy two hundred dollars the PTOs, which is twelve hundred dollars per PTO. That's a lot. Um, that's you know one of the Sorry, ways, how much 70, was was seventy six hundred? Yeah. Oh, 76? 70, 70, 70, 200, 7,200. So we're committing another $17,200. And then we're going to, hopefully we'll get through this year. And then we just go back to the $20,000 level um, next spring. So I'm moving to allocate 7,200 from the ink to Northampton PTOs and 10,000 to Northampton COVID Artist Relief Fund. I second that. Does anybody else want to have, yeah, any other input from the municipal board on that? Well, um, I would just like a report. My sense is, I, you know, I don't know, adding, but it would be great to get, a, a you know, a, some sort of, I mean, asking, you know, sending to the PTOs and asking for a report on how it was used. So, I'm gonna to have to do a bunch of digging for trans performance. Um, this is particularly for the school committee, Lori and, and Tulani. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of turnover every year in the PTOs. And usually like, I there's usually a captain because when you think about a PTO, there's like a parent and the parent has kids in the particular school and then the kid like ages up from like Bridge Street to like JFK, et cetera. So sometimes, but they have multiple kids and multiple things and usually have like a captain to each PTO, right? But we haven't, we didn't do it last year. So I don't know who's left in the PTOs and like what the, the status of the PTOs because, you know, the public school has been all over the place. So I'm going to have to do some real deep digging and like figure out who are all the PTO people now. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I get that list together, I will share it with the, the school the school subcommittee. And then you can work maybe with one of the, or two of the members, maybe even the treasurer of like each PTO uh to do some you know tracing of like oh what did you guys do last year what were the events what do who did you pay and then we'll have some like accountability for the board to see what kind of activities uh trans performance funds are are uh yeah, are think... supporting in the schools I, I have a comment about that mm -hmm. um i think if we i don't think that the current any current PTO parents are going to want to look back and see what's happened in the past. And I say this as a parent. Um, I think it would be more productive and positive to initiate that policy now moving forward rather than okay. going back. I think I think it's appropriate to, um, and one of the questions in our communication to the principals is, would it be, would it be helpful for us to have a liaison to the, to the PTO? So, so I think looking back, you know, parents are too busy. They don't want to look back into the records. They want to say, this is now, and they'll be happy to tell us what they've done with the money currently, but to ask them to look back, I think we risk pissing people off. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, no, I'm point. With that. I think once in a while. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kathy. No, I, I agree. Moving forward, when we, when we send them, when we give them the money, ask to have an account, you know, ask to have, please let us know what you did. Yeah, and rather than, rather than like, mm -hmm not in a scolding way in a, we're so excited to know what you're oh, what, sure. yeah that's the whole point i'm excited we're, yeah we're just talking about here we are giving um extra money to you know through the through the um different funds the steve's the uh, the extra grant funding but what what did you do i mean in terms of enhancing the arts in the schools well let me ask a question then um is it appropriate brian to to say that um, we will be continuing to donate to the PTOs. It, yeah, is that appropriate? 
Ryan, are I you? Oh, uh, so uh, what are you? Uh, I'm asking? saying, is it is it appropriate to say to the principals that our plan, because our plan is to continue to donate to the PTOs. Yeah, we can't donate directly to the school. Right. But it's okay to say that to the principals. That, yeah, that, it just can't. It can't be quid pro quo, though. You can't like ask for something. No, no. You're donating. Of yeah, course. yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so of course. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'll uh, do some digging, and if the school subcommittee wants to help me find out who the PTO, uh, you know, um, active PTO members from each school is. Would be helpful but i'll i have to do some digging anyways because i run like the front of the house for trans performance and part of that is the pto's um help run concessions basically uh as a volunteer piece that's their like skin in the game if you will uh <laughs> and <laughs> and then like the northampton high school football team comes and helps set up the stage on the morning of trans performance and that's kind of the the, health, the high school's like uh contribution and so everybody does something different but I'll, I'll be making contacts soon with my older list and see who's passed on so and then I'll share the list with the school subcommittee and then you can say hey like we'd love you know this is the school subcommittee if you have any questions like ask us if you want to do you know that kind of stuff we can draft another letter or something specifically for the PTOs it may and, well, uh, sorry go ahead please I apologize it, it may well be that in our communications with the principals, such a list will be forthcoming anyway because of the overlap. Okay. I hope I hope so. And, and then we can save you the trouble. Lori, just interrupt me anytime you want. It's okay. I hate it. It's a bad habit. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, it's okay. Like I'm just like you can do that. So I think I've kept you past 9 p.m. So uh, if somebody wants to make a motion or if there's any more questions or comments about, you know, our agenda. Um, I'll no? make a motion to close the ink meeting. Second. No, I can't second, can second. I? Second, I was seconding. Yeah. <laughs> All okay. in favor? Sure. Your dog is so cute. And again, I want to once yeah. again thank everybody for their service to the city. And I always enjoy seeing everybody's face. And uh, and I look forward to seeing everybody in person soon. Yay. I'm vaccinated. Oh, Brian, wait. Wait, Brian, wait. What? Uh, Freeman told me that I was supposed to tell you that, yes, I would love to have a gathering at my house anytime yes. in June. Okay. So call me and we'll figure it out. Okay. All right. I want I want Freeman to, to plan it and then send the email out. Okay. But I'll I'll uh, I'll talk to him again. I want it to be a board generated thing. So, but we might as well tell everybody we I want to have like an informal gathering at Lori's house, so we can all see each other in person for the first time, and just have drinks and we can talk about whatever we want. But it's not a board meeting. It'll be you know it's not compulsory, but it'd be cool just to get together all in person in a non like pressurized setting just to hang a out party? Okay. A, a party a party a party it's been so long potluck and chairs you got to bring chairs i'll bring cheesecake okay. so, good, night, yeah, we'll, good night everybody thank, thank you so you. much bye-bye bye-bye